On this episode of O'Fallon Matters, find out how a partnership is helping to clean our streams, learn more about an aqua therapy class that's aiding children with developmental disabilities, and get an update on O'Fallon's wastewater treatment plan improvements. All this and more next on O'Fallon Matters. Welcome to this episode of O'Fallon Matters. The Veterans Memorial Walk was the site of our POW MIA Recognition Day ceremony, and we are honored to have a special guest speaker recount his experiences during his service. O'Fallon TV's Brett Fickus is here with more. Prisoner of war, missing in action. Two simple phrases that have an immeasurable impact on those who have served in our armed forces and those here at home who are still waiting for their loved ones to return. In every armed conflict, there are those who will lay down their lives in defense of our ideals and freedoms. And that's why it's both an honor and a solemn obligation to hold our annual POW MIA Recognition Day ceremony. Every year, we recognize those who remain unaccounted for, and this year was no exception. Standing in front of the imposing marble monoliths of the Veterans Memorial Walk, Mayor Bill Hennessy delivered the opening remarks, focusing this year on World War II. The war raged from December of 41 to August of 45, and when it was over, 400,000 Americans had laid down their lives to guarantee our nation's freedom, another 79,000 unaccounted for. The good news is, Efforts continue to locate these lost troops, not just from World War II, but from all modern conflicts. On behalf of our city to the families who are still waiting for word of a missing loved one, and to veterans who are looking to have buddies lost from their ranks returned to American soil, our prayers and our hopes are with you. And for the blessings of freedom, we enjoy every single day. We are indebted to each and every American who fought for our country. Our keynote speaker this year was Staff Sergeant Robert Garvey, a distinguished veteran and a former prisoner of war. Rob had flown 30 successful missions as a nose turret gunner on a B-24 Liberator heavy bomber. On his 31st, on a mission to bomb an enemy aircraft factory in Munich, Germany, Rob and his crewmates came under deadly fire. The plane was attacked by ME 410s, which was a twin engine fighter that had 30 caliber guns and 20 millimeter. Now, a 30 caliber shell looks like this. These are the same ones that we, all our gunners, on the B 24 shot. Those 30 caliber shells wreaked havoc on Rob's plane, and his pilot commanded the crew to bail out as the plane was no longer controllable. After successfully leaping from the nose wheel door, Rob landed in a dimly lit field, but his ordeal was far from over. And the first thing they tell you is to leave your guns at home because you can't shoot your way out. Head for the woods after you gather your shoot up and hide out in the woods during the day and walk towards Switzerland at night. That was my idea and I was running for the woods when something hit me in the side, knocked me down and I wasn't sure what it was. I unzipped all my clothes and I finally saw blood coming out of my chest and I knew I'd been shot. So, dumb me, I stood up to see where the shot came from and he shot again and it went through my arm. Wounded, tired, and deep behind enemy lines, Rob was captured and marched to a small German town where a German priest and some townsfolk tended to his wounds. Once he was well enough to travel, he was transferred to a military hospital so that he could be interrogated by German intelligence officers. Well, I was in the hospital about three weeks and I decided to take my toy. 
interrogation center in Frankfurt, Germany. So at the interrogation center, they put me in a cell, which is about 10 feet long and about eight feet wide. The next morning, an officer, a German officer came in and asked me where I'd been. And I said, in the hospital in Freising for the last month. He said, well, we know more than you do, so I have no questions for you. But I thought I would tell you that the rest of your crew has been through here and they're all safe. Robert Garvey spent the rest of the war in a POW camp, and he had several anecdotes about his time there. If you'd like to listen to Rob's account of his time as a prisoner of war, check out O'Fallon's YouTube channel, where we'll upload the entire ceremony. After Robert's compelling speech, Vietnam Veterans of America Chapter 458 and AMVETS Post 106 held a dressing of the table ceremony in honor of those still missing in action. And we held a candle lighting ceremony to commemorate and honor the sacrifice of our servicemen and women. After a laying of the wreath, a rifle salute, and a rendition of taps, the ceremony was concluded. But the memory of those left behind lingers on. And that's why our community holds a POW MIA Recognition Day ceremony every year. Keep it in mind, that's the main thing, because a lot of POWs are not with us anymore. We will never forget our prisoners of war and our missing in action until every single one of them is, is home on American soil where they belong. To me, it's something this city of O'Fallon has been dedicated since this thing's opened up. So it's, it's great for our community. Volunteering in O'Fallon just took a fresh new turn. Let's see how the leadership class of Fort Zumwalt South High School is partnering with Volunteer O'Fallon to help keep our precious streams clean. Giving back to the community through volunteering helps contribute to the common good of O'Fallon. No matter how we do it, giving back can touch many lives. Now, on this segment of O'Fallon Matters, we'll catch up with a group of young students who are on a mission to clean our streams. The leadership class over at Fort Zumwalt South High are leading the first ever Operation O-Town Creek Clean in partnership with our city. These students are determined to improve their community by igniting environmental change through learning and grassroots planning. We're gonna come out and help the environment clean the creek up and just get out there, bring a lot of people, encourage our friends and family to come out. We partner with a lot of leadership classes within the Fort Zumwalt School District. Um, but this is our first time partnering on such a large scale with one of the leadership classes and we're really excited about um, all of the things that the students are going to be able to do with this project from start to finish. Operation O-Town is unique because the students of Mr. Beckett's leadership class are coordinating the entire event from the ground up. Over the years, the city has organized many creek cleanups, but this is the first event led entirely by students. We're giving full control over the whole creative process to the leadership students. So from the ground up, the creation of the name, the logos, flyers, uh, social media hashtags, public service announcements, they're having um, all of the decision-making rights to the whole project. I think it just gives them a vast experience of doing different things. So when they go into the future and they're put in different situations, they already have some experience doing these type of things. I think it's really doing a good job of bringing a lot of them out of their shell, sometimes putting them in a position that's a little uncomfortable for them. But we talk about when you get into an uncomfortable situation, that's when you really grow as a person. And we're trying to really get these kids to grow and really see what they're capable of doing. During this project, students learned how to write press releases, create logos, and they even produced a public service announcement. But for the students, hey, it's about taking place. leadership and improving the community they live in. It's a really complex process that, that Megan has had step by step for us, and we've really learned a lot of information about news and everything else that we've had to do. And it's really brought this whole project together. I want them to get a sense of accomplishment. I want them to realize when this creek clean is finished that they were such a huge part of it. They made it happen. They brought the community together and they did something really good that helped others. So many times people think of teenagers as being very self-centered, um, only caring about themselves. These kids are proving that wrong. Okay, so they are coming together. They're working for something that's bigger than themselves. 
If you want to help out the Ford Zumwalt South Leadership class complete their clean stream mission, you can go to www.ofallon.mo.us slash operation dash O-Town. You know, the city of O'Fallon is all about a place to live, play, and work, and we can't have that atmosphere if we're not actively involved with our community members. And the youth of our community are such an untapped population to really have involved on such a ground level of things that we're doing within the city. The Renaud Spirit Center is the first place you think of when you want to get your sweat on, shoot some hoops, or take a dive in our natatorium. And now it's also the place St. Charles County goes for aqua therapy classes for children with developmental disabilities. Let's see what United Services for Children is doing to help our community. Through the years, the Renaud Spirit Center has played host to a number of great programs and events. And lately, the shimmering water of the RSC's natatorium has been the home of an organization that seeks to help children of all abilities reach their full potential. United Services for Children, a nonprofit organization headquartered in St. Charles County, has been a leader in physical, occupational, and speech therapies for over 43 years. And we're proud to say their innovative aqua therapy programs are now held right here in our hometown. In 2015, after noting that many of their members were driving into St. Louis in search of suitable therapy programs, United Services for Children began seeking out a partner for aqua therapy our hometown pool stepped up. We um, looked around this community to find a partner who would be receptive to having aqua therapy in their pool setting. And it was actually a little bit harder than we anticipated, but we were able to partner with the Renaud Spirit Center. They welcomed us into their pool area and have done so with the um, ability for us to not have to pass on um, exorbitant expense to the families that we serve. So they've been a fantastic partner to us and we really could not have requested anything better. For children with developmental disabilities or special needs, common tasks can sometimes be a struggle. Through one-on-one -on -one and group classes, aqua therapy provided by United Services for Children helps kids work on their motor skills, improve their speech and language, and even help them socialize and gain confidence. For the children, it just feels like a fun day at the pool. For the parents, it's a life-changing service that has a lasting impact on their whole family. It was a good start for her because she moved from nothing, from zero, to as you can see right now. And um, she started with the building blocks class and then they moved her within a month because she was doing the talking, she was saying hi, and she was saying mommy and daddy. So. That was, that was like a dream, like a, it was a miracle. United Services, it was a big step in our life, so I will thank him every single day. Oh my goodness, so good! It's extremely gratifying as an occupational therapist to know that what I do makes a difference, um, to hear the stories from parents that their child never loved a bath, and now they're able to tolerate them washing their hair, um, which for a lot of families is a big deal. It's, um, it's extremely rewarding to know that I have a, a space, um, and I believe that this aqua therapy program is extremely important to our community um, for kids of all disabilities. United Services for Children's mission to support children and families is something we're extremely proud to support. And recently, they honored the Renaud Spirit Center by naming it their 2018 Community Partnership Award recipient. It was a perfect fit to award the Renaud Spirit Center with our Community Partnership Award. They have been flexible with us. They have accommodated all of the children's physical and sensory needs, and they're just delightful to work with. We really look forward to working with them for years to come. If your child has developmental delays or disabilities, consider seeing if United Services for Children can help. They offer a number of programs throughout the year including early intervention sessions, family support programs, and therapy classes like the aqua therapy held right here at the RSC. You can get more information about this nonprofit organization on their website at unitedservicesforchildren.org. I would say just go for it. It's, it's a big step for any child's development, especially with mine, you know, moving from nothing to be as she is right now, it is a good step. 
say thank you. Thank, thank you, Miss Erin. You're welcome, and see you later. On Friday nights in the fall, student athletes compete for football supremacy under the foggy lights. Joe Meyer is here with the O'Fallon Matters Sports Spotlight. Over on the north side of O'Fallon, there's a football program that's turning heads on the gridiron. Smash Mouth Football reigns supreme at Fort Zumwalt. And over the last five years, the Panthers have dominated the GAC. In fact, the Panthers have won over 40 games in a row against St. Charles County opponents. With several deep runs in the playoffs, expectations run high each year. I would say the strength of our team is our desire to succeed, expectations set by years past. Obviously, last year we went to the state semifinals. The year before that, we went to state. So it's not only to get there, but to win it this year. So coming into this year, again, with not a whole lot of returners coming back, we didn't really know what to expect. So the goal really week to week is make sure we're getting better and try to maximize what we have, because um, we've got a lot of talent and, and we're getting experience every week. And so we just want to make sure every night when we walk off after a game on Friday night that that we feel like if the other team beat us, they beat us playing our best, and uh, make sure we keep taking that step every week. Fort Zumwalt North is second in Missouri's Class 5 rankings, and this group of Panthers will run into several challenges throughout the season, but staying mentally tough and committed can help them overcome adversity. There's some pretty tough teams out there that we have to face, but really for us, the biggest challenge is just making sure we, we stay at that, that nice, level of, of, of performance every single week. So we've had a tendency to kind of play well and then we drop off and then play well and drop off. So um, that's like from game to game, quarter to quarter, series to series. And so just playing as well as we can on a consistent basis is the thing we're really focused on right now. The Panthers play a brand of hard-nosed football. Fans who watch this squad roll on Friday nights won't be disappointed with their style of play. We like to run the ball as much as possible. Uh, that's changed the last couple years with quarterbacks we've had that could throw it. And then also we've gotten some receivers out there that do a great job catching the ball. So uh, the goal is always to be balanced, but um, always first we want to be able to establish the run. And then on the de defensive side of the ball, just being an aggressive physical team. Uh, we want to make the other team fight for any yards that they get and, and not give up any easy scores or easy yards. With continued program success and a coaching staff with years of experience, it's no wonder the Panthers keep winning games. They hold us accountable, man. Like they, uh, they like, they hold you to like a certain standard, and if you're not meeting that, like, they'll have a talk with you. They'll like, they'll say, they'll ask you why you're not performing at the level, and then they'll try to help you fix it. We've had guys with not a lot of egos who are willing to sacrifice their free time to come up and get extra work and really buy into the program. My favorite part would probably be the brotherhood and friendship we've had among our team, freshman and senior, we're all pretty close. Good luck to the Fort Zumwalt North Panthers on their pursuit towards a deep playoff run or even a state championship. And don't forget to head over to the north side of O'Fallon for an exciting brand of high school football. Massive infrastructure projects are taking place throughout O'Fallon. The wastewater treatment plant just installed new biosolids processing equipment. Let's take a look at this new upgrade. Over the past 20 years, the city of O'Fallon has experienced tremendous growth. In fact, we have grown to over 80,000 residents. And with all that growth comes the need to upgrade city infrastructure. And after years of planning, the city of O'Fallon's biosolids facility is receiving a much needed upgrade. So the facility behind me is the wastewater treatment plant's biosolids facility. It takes the sludge and the, the, the solids out of the sanitary sewer and it transforms it into a fertilizer. Now the building behind me was built in 1999 and all the equipment in there is original to that building. So the thickening process and the belt presses that we have in there have reached their end of life and need to be replaced. So we're replacing the thickeners with new thickeners and we're replacing the belt presses with screw presses. These newer state-of-the-art technologies will help us process the sludge more efficiently and also help us reduce the odors in the future. Planning a project like this takes years of planning and cooperation among city leaders and staff. And now the project is well on its way to completion. Well, this $3.5 million project has been in the works for four years that I've been here with the city. It started with identifying the problem, then looking for a solution. And once we identified that, we spoke to the PWAC and city council and presented all the information to them before we moved forward. It took about a year worth of design, and then we decided to pre-procure some of the components, the two larger components of the project. By doing that, we were able to save up to a million dollars for the city. 
so we pre-procured the screw press and the thickeners to get those under construction and delivered in time for us to get a contractor here to start the project. Residents will be happy to know that the updated screw press will have an immediate impact on the system. So the one thing the residents may notice more than anything else is reduction of odors due to this project. These new systems and how they're piped into our chemical scrubber to reduce odors is, is much more efficient and done a lot better than the, re the original equipment how it was set up. Watch future episodes of O'Fallon Matters to stay up to date on all the upgrades taking place at O'Fallon's wastewater treatment plant. And if you would like more information on this project, you can go to ofallon.mo.us or call 636-281-2858. Our staff here at the wastewater plant has been unbelievably good to work with and help us out with this whole process. And working with the PwC City Council and other city staff to make this move forward. Also having a good contractor on board has helped us out so far in the project. Now let's learn about a new O'Fallon website that's purpose is to attract potential businesses to our community by telling a compelling digital story. Here in the city of O'Fallon, we continue to grow and thrive. With the philosophy of family first, the city has achieved phenomenal and intelligent growth for more than four decades, making it one of America's safest cities and best places to live. Our economic development team continues to be proactive in developing relationships with businesses seeking to locate, retain, or expand their operation in O'Fallon. Recently, Economic Development launched a new tool that's designed to help grow O'Fallon now and into the future. Well, we took a, a lot of time researching uh, best practices in our industry and we looked at significant number of websites across the nation and what they have done to, to this. One of the focuses that we had was to try to make sure that our new website was mobile ready and so we looked at a lot of websites that had that ability to convert from tabletop to tablet to mobile device because we know that people we want to work with are always on the go. We really targeted site selectors and business owners um, that we believe would be interested in coming to the city of O'Fallon. So the website is really designed geared to provide them helpful information such as demographics, uh, population info, um, and different like infrastructure and utility information that many site selectors will be looking for. Select O'Fallon helps economic development set itself apart. It shows industry and business leaders that O'Fallon has prime business and industry sites. It tells the story of central location, quality developments, and future prosperity. I think one of the most important things and messages we can communicate to an outside audience is success breeds success. And if you look at what O'Fallon has done, not only from a growth perspective, the investments that we have made as a city into our community, and the businesses that have thrived here. And so you'll see a long list of businesses on our website that talk about true manufacturing, city, MasterCard, all the companies that have done really well here in O'Fallon and that is a clear indicator to other companies that they can come here and be successful. Now creating an extensive website like Select O'Fallon took months of detailed research and content management. It's a lot of teamwork, uh, working a lot with our communications team and a lot of outside organizations such as you know the Chamber, the O'Fallon Chamber, the St. Louis Regional Chamber, um, the EDC of St. Charles. Uh, just a lot of teamwork in the, within the community and outside of the community itself. Select O'Fallon just launched, but economic development is already planning future upgrades to the site. In the future, we're going to be making the website um, much more interactive. Like for example, we're going to be adding uh, many drone videos of the uh, sites that we have in O'Fallon. So users will be able to get on the site and scope out the sites uh, in a first-hand experience. Check out all that Select O'Fallon has to offer by going to selectofallon.com. Well, we want to really tell our story here in O'Fallon and talk about what we can do to help businesses be successful. And I think through our website, Select O'Fallon, that we have done that in offering all the options, both sites, opportunities to work together with the city and our partners to be successful. And I think that's been accomplished through the Select O'Fallon. Thanks for joining us today. If you have a good story idea, let us know. You can email us at O'FallonTV at O'Fallon.mo.us. And please remember, give back to your community because O'Fallon matters to all of us.